So this week we're flying to Poland to figure a few things out and focus in peace on Dawson Barker as a business. I've obviously brought the one and only Ennis with me. Um, this is being filmed after the event. We're actually on our way back now at the airport and this lovely bar here. I thought I would run you through my thoughts so far, having just started the business a couple of months ago on the 1st of July and give you a few realities on what everything is like. But just before we get into that, there's a few important things that you guys need to do to help this channel grow. I'm actually gonna give this to Ennis to let you know. For everyone, like, subscribe and comment. Do it now, do it now, whilst we're transitioning into the rest of the video. Just one more thing, turn on the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future uploads. We're now uploading every Wednesday and Sunday. With well, that being said, let's get straight into the video. Hello guys, welcome back to the vlog. Today we're in Poland, putting together a strategy plan for Dawson Barker. Enjoy. It's actually snowing as well. <clears throat> for some reason, it's actually very peaceful compared to London. Bit of a river view there, nice. And I start from Poland so far. Great, must be the coldest place I've ever been to. <laughs> Great. Perfect. Oh, look at the, the road's what? great. <laughs> this is, it's not slippery at all. No, 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 very, very good, safe conditions here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The grip here is perfect. Yeah. I live in the city centre in Poland, obviously, so... You should be telling the roads very well maintained. Yeah, just, just floor it, mate. Yeah, exactly. You can't. <laughs> Quick pit stop at Stop Cafe with Ennis. Quick hot dog. Yeah, heading back to the airport. Enough of the strategy meeting yeah. in Poland. Yeah, in the car. Obviously, this is what these uh, cup holders are made for. They're actually hot dog holders in, in Poland. There you are. Great. Yeah. You enjoyed your stay in Poland? The best, mate. Great. Too hot, isn't it? Too hot, really hot. Um, great, now we're heading back. So now that you've seen a little montage of our time so far in Poland, I just wanted to run through three things that anyone starting a business in 2024 needs to consider because it's not been a smooth ride. First of all, getting off the ground and running. Second of all, funding. And third of all, hiring people. These are all three things that are really, really difficult and that I didn't give enough thought before I started this whole business. So getting off the ground and running. Um, I think nobody goes into business assuming that it's going to be really easy to get started, but I did not expect, um, I guess, the difficulty that not your customers or clients um, would pose to you as an agent, but actually competitors and other agents. Um, it's not as supportive and uh, lovely and fluffy as I thought it might be. Um, a lot of people when I started the business really, really tried to make sure it shuts down within the first couple of weeks. Um, lots of threats, lots of really nasty messages. Um, and I guess that's the reality of a doggy dog environment and market. Um, but ultimately I can put my hands up and say, I did not see that coming. Um, you know, we uh, went to try and acquire or instruct our first client uh, as a business, Ennis and I. And um, yeah, let's just put it this way. We got the client, but the client was with another agent and she fired those agents and gave her our property, sorry, gave her property to us to sell. Those agents were really, really unhappy and literally sent me books. And I'll put a screenshot on the screen here, obviously blurring the agent's name out. Um, they sent me books on how to not alienate people and lose friends um, because they were so, so annoyed that I took a client, I guess. Um, yeah, it's tough. It's tough when you're starting a business because you never know what's going to be thrown at you from the competition. Obviously clients as well, they have nothing to go off, no website, no track record, no reviews. So everything just takes time. But with a bit of patience, perseverance, and a bit of tough skin, everyone can get through those initial first couple of months and then get everything up and running. You know, we've been going for four or five months now. I've gone from literally people trying to shut us down to now trying to collaborate and trying to be on our side and all that sort of stuff. So you just got to get through that initial bump which is really, really difficult. Um, and that goes for any business out there. It's not just real estate. I think that can be applied to anything. Um, you've just got to persevere, be patient, and have a bit of th thick skin um, right from the start. Funding, that's another thing that going into business is something you really need to consider. So I started off by putting together a business plan, cash flow forecast, 
and a personal survival budget. So obviously I'm also human and I've got my own living expenses such as rent, bills, going out, whatever. Um, and I had to make sure that I calculate X amount of months for me to survive without making any money, of course. Um, and the same for the business in terms of the cash flow forecast, when I'm expecting money to come in. When you're starting an agency specifically, uh, a real estate agency, your first revenue doesn't come for a very long time. In fact, here in the UK, it might take, and in the US, I guess, it might take a year, it might take two years before you bank your first sales commission um, because it just takes a long time to instruct the client, get the property sold, and then get it through the legals as well. Um, so I guess because I'm quite new to this whole business stuff, um, I massively underestimated some of the costs and some of it I really did expect. Um, you know, the general running costs I think anyone can anticipate, but actually um, the way I've set up the business is all of my agents are on a commission only basis, so I'm not paying anyone a salary. Um, so I thought I could just hire a lot of agents um, and um, they'll just start making lots of money for me and for themselves out of the brokerage and that would be great, um, but it's obviously not like that. With every agent, whether they're employed or not, come a heck of a load of costs. So I might not be, be paying them a salary, but I am spending thousands and thousands of pounds per month on putting them in my office, on all of the systems, all of the portals, all of the lead generators, everything. Um, and I guess that's something that I didn't consider right off the bat and started hiring lots and lots of agents um, way before the business was ready for it. And obviously when you've got lots and lots of agents, you need a bigger office. And so we took on a massive office that we're paying five figures a month for. Um, even though the business isn't at a point where it can start spending that sort of money, if that makes sense. So I think one thing that I've had to realise within myself is that I jump forward a bit too quickly. Um, but uh, all of it is a learning journey. Um, you know, if you don't do these things, if you don't trip up a few times here and there, you never learn. Um, so I'm going into all of this with you know, a huge open mind and uh, I'm sure everything is going to be absolutely fine. But for anyone else out there <clears throat> trying to start a business, just consider those big costs and your cash flow for, I'd say, literally 18 months. Um, and if you don't have a buffer for 18 months, you should probably wait until you do have that money um, and then uh, go into starting a business because the funding side of things is not uh, a joke. Once the money's gone, the business closes. Um, so, yeah, it's not easy. Obviously, I'm happy to say that I'm bootstrapping the whole business by myself at the moment through uh, you know, other ventures that I've had in the past, but in the future as a business, we might consider things like venture capital or angel investors or uh, external funding just to you know, be able to upkeep everything and uh, help it grow even further. Um, so lots to consider on the funding side of the business, but I guess my whole point of all of this was just to say, <clears throat> I thought I knew exactly how much I would have spent, but in reality, everything is completely different. Um, and uh, you know, in some areas, we felt quite short budget-wise had to be creative to sort of make certain areas of the business more cost efficient so that we could spend on others that we didn't anticipate, if that makes sense. Okay, so stay with me for this one. Recruitment has been one of the most difficult things that I've found since starting the business. Um, finding the right people, the right fit, is so important. It's the most important thing, especially for the sort of brokerage and real estate agency that I'm trying to build at the moment. Um, and at times I feel like I've seen people just for the sake of seeing them, even though I know they're not the right fit for the business because I want to hire a lot of people. I want it all to grow very quickly, um, but ultimately that leads to bad decisions. Um, hiring the right people is so crucial. And I thought there'd be a lot of people out there and that'd be interested in jumping, sorry, interested in jumping straight uh, on board with Dawson Barker as a brand new company. Um, but it's not necessarily the case. People have mortgages, people have children, people have all these important facts that they've got to consider when jumping ship from a you know, far more stable and established agency like Savills or Mike Frank or in the US, something like Douglas Elliman or Nest Seekers, all the really established um, property brokerages. So I guess going into, uh, again, if I was to ever start a new business again, I wouldn't have my hopes so high in terms of the uh, people I'd be able to attract from day one. Um, it's not like I've been an agent for 40 years and I've got an unlimited list of people that I've worked with and done lots of deals with that know, like, and trust me enough to leave really, really, really high salaries and jump here uh, to work for no salary at all and join a completely new thing that could um, just fall apart anyway. So um, I've had to, you know, search uh, far and wide for my talent and I'm very, very happy with the team that I've got. 
um, as a result of that search, but it's very time consuming, also very expensive if you're using recruiters um, in the UK. So I guess for anyone watching this, if you think you'd be a good fit as a new real estate agent, drop me a comment in the comment section down below and I'll make sure to reach out to you and we can set up a call. Um, but otherwise, I think that's it. I wanted to jump on, make sure that we're sticking to our upload schedule and uh, catch up with you guys. Uh, I'd really appreciate it if you could like, subscribe and comment, of course, helps push the YouTube algorithm. And with that being said, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.